Happy Thursday, campers and families. Leslie here, your Senior Program Director. I'm so excited that you're joining us for the evening program tonight. We have a real treat for you. A couple of weeks ago, some of our campers joined a live chat with two actors who have leading roles in the musical Hamilton. The campers had a great time and they asked some really, really good questions. And so now we're able to share this live chat with all of you tonight. So joining us is Julius Thomas III, who plays John Hamilton, and Victoria Scovins, who plays Eliza Hamilton. So without further ado, let's get this party started. What I'd like to do first is introduce our two hosts. Um, one you may know uh, well if you're in senior camp, um, and Maddie um, is, let's see, you want to wave Maddie because we're on two screens? Yeah, Maddie Murphy from senior camp is going to be one of our hosts today. And Brittany Fitzgerald unfortunately doesn't have a camera today because she's lost power. But Brittany is a brand new counselor and she was also a camper in the past. So she and Maddie will host today. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Go ahead, Maddie. Hi everyone, it's so nice to see you all. I really missed you all and it's, it's great to see some familiar faces. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you guys and be able to talk to these wonderful actors and actresses. So before we begin, I just wanna review some of the things Cindy also said around any questions you have. So just how this is going to go is I'm going to um, introduce the actor and actress who are on the call and ask them to tell them, tell us a little bit about themselves. And then after that, and during that, feel free to start chatting questions, like Cindy said, in the chat box. And once it's time to open up to questions, mm -hmm. I'll be able to call on you all. And I think I'll be able to actually unmute you also. So up until then, if you can stay on mute, that would be awesome. So we can hear everyone speaking. I know we'll all really want to hear what's going on. So this will be really exciting. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's really it. I'm really excited for you all to be here. And Julius and Victoria, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind starting off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and who you played in Hamilton. Awesome. Who do you want to go first? Julius, since you're unmuted, go right ahead. <laughs> and then we'll uh, go over to Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm Julius Thomas III. I am originally from Gary, Indiana in the middle of the Midwest. And I went to Wichita State University for, univer for my schooling. And I currently live in both New York and Los Angeles. Uh, and I'm an actor. And I play Alexander Hamilton in the uh, and Peggy Company of Hamilton, along with my cohort over here, Victoria, who I'll pass it over to. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Victoria Scovins. Um, I studied musical theater at DeSales University, and I'm from Pennsylvania, um, so my school is in the middle of a cornfield. Um, <laughs> um, I am 23 years old, and I play Eliza in the Anne Peggy Tour of Hamilton. Yay, my wifey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting. Awesome. Well, um, campers, if you wanted to start chatting your questions, that would be great. And I can unmute and call on you. Um, and I guess I'll start out with a question I know some campers might also have. Uh, let's see. When did you realize you wanted to be a performer? And Victoria, why don't we start out with you? And then Julius, if you wanted to jump in then. Great. Um, that's a tough question. I think, I mean, I, I have been performing since I was like young, young. I was in all the talent shows from like the age of five or six. So maybe not young, young, young for me compared to everybody else. But um, from the age of like five or six, my mom, um, was putting me in talent shows and she ended up like being in charge of the talent shows at school um, up until I was in like, uh, until my freshman year of high school. 
Um, and so I, you know, my first performance was, I don't know if you guys know um, The Princess and the Pauper, the Barbie movie, but I sang the song um, about, she, about the cat. And I had one of those like for real friend animatronic cat toys and I sat on the floor in a blue dress <laughs> and sang to a plastic cat. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it was only up from there, so that's good. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I knew that like, that it was something I, it was something I always enjoyed. Um, I think I knew that I wanted to pursue it in some way as a career when I was maybe 13 or 14. Um, I really wanted to be a recording artist and I wanted to do like the Disney stuff and um, we couldn't afford, I didn't grow up with a lot of money so we couldn't afford you know the dance lessons and the acting lessons and the singing lessons <laughs> that were required to do all that and um so i learned how to sing properly in school choir and in church choir um and i learned how to dance by watching youtube videos i'd record like eight hours of mtv um like early, early in the morning when they actually play music videos. And then I'd come home from school and I'd just watch, watch it over and over and over again and try to like pick up choreography. Um, and yeah, and I didn't start theater until the spring of my sophomore year of high school. So I was about halfway through with high school before I decided that I wanted to do theater. I was, at that point I was in choir, but I was like truly a captain, I did, um, a lot of sports, uh, a lot of gymnastics, um, and then I quit it all to do theater. So, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Victoria. Um, mm -hmm. And a fun fact about camp, too, is we have a talent show at the end of the week, and I actually know a lot of these faces performing the talent show, which is pretty fun. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. But, Julius, why don't you tell us about... Um, your, when did you know you wanted to go into performing and about that? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm just really curious if any one of these young folks even know what MTV is. I was thinking that as Victoria was talking. <laughs> I was like, they probably have no idea what MTV is. Um, I, likewise, there's a lot of similarities between mine and Victoria's story there. Um, I started singing really young, mostly in church. I sang in the choir at church and I um, led praise and worship and things of that nature. My dad's a pastor and my mom's um, the, the um, uh, treasurer of the church that I grew up in, in. And so I did a lot of music in church. Uh, and then PTA meetings and all kinds of fun stuff like that growing up. And when I got to high school, uh, they started a theater program and our first production of the entire thing was Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And I went in auditioning for it, thinking it would just be something fun in between track and cross country season, um, because I just didn't want to have to go home, you know, every night other than that. And I had a lot of fun. I got to play Joseph my freshman year, and then we did Jesus Christ Superstar, and I got to play Jesus my second year, and you know, just sort of on and on and on and spiraled. But then when I went away to college, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, I was going to be a, either a physical therapist or a physician's assistant. And so I sort of put music and theater on the back burner. But about halfway through my college learning, I just was bored and I was really hating it. And I thought, what could I do? What could be a thing that um, I could really enjoy doing, but also make earn a good living at? And I decided to switch back to musical theater and transfer schools and sort of the rest is history. So right around my junior year of college, I would say right at around 19 or 20 was when I decided that I wanted to be a professional performer. And it's going great. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you both for sharing that. Um, so it looks like Chelsea put a question in the chat. Chelsea, I'll, tr oh, I think I see you here. I'll ask to unmute you and feel free to unmute yourself too. There we go. So if you wanted to ask your question um, to either Julius or Victoria or both, go right ahead. 
this question's for both of you. What's your favorite song to perform during the musical? Okay, I'll go first this time since you went last time, Ricky. Um, I really love Quiet Uptown. Uh, it's a really soft and peaceful song. And it's, I'm sure you guys know the show really well, so I hope, hopefully I'm not spoiling anything here. But um, it's at Hamilton's lowest point. He is really sad because some really traumatic things have happened in his life. He's really heartbroken. He lost a loved one. He's in a lot of trouble in his career and politically. And so I get to sing this song that's sort of like a redemption song and there's tears and there's, you know, this really lovely connecting moment with my wifey, Victoria. Um, so I just, I just really love that song because it's sort of like his lowest moment and then he can start to make the climb back up to being a happy and healthy individual again. Yeah, I think Quiet Up Town is, is actually a good choice. Um, that's a, it, it changes, um, well, it, when we were at work, it changed every night, sort of. Um, I know Burn is like, without a doubt, one of my favorite songs because um, it's the only chance she has to just like let it fly. This poor woman is put through the ringer <laughs> and she just sort of has to like take it on the chin and suck it up and, you know, like love this man for all of his flaws and, you know, um, and he does her really wrong and she gets to just actually be mad for once. Um, and then it's over and she has to go back, to, <laughs> go back to, you know, before, but, um, yeah, I think burn and that would be enough is all is another one of my favorites. Cause it's just, it's one of the only times that Julius and I are like actually alone together on stage, um, and actually get to like connect and talk to each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. You do most of this talking in that song. And I'm, g I'm good with That's that. True. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Those are two beautiful songs. All three of those songs are actually gorgeous. So that's awesome. And thank you for sharing. Um, I'm curious, I think Parker, it looks like you put something in the chat. Do you have a question for us? Let's see where Parker is. A lot of people on here, which is awesome. Hmm, I see you here, Parker. Parker, do you have a question for us? Oh, okay. Parker did not mean to type that. That's okay. Um, Hallie, great question. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. Hi. Um, so I was just wondering, other than Hamilton, obviously, what is what are your guys' favorite musicals? Oh, um, Pippin. I could talk about that show for the rest of my life. Pippin is one of my favorite shows. Um, uh, the Pirate Woman with Stephanie J. Block, um, but Rachel Tucker also kills it. Ooh. I'm blanking. I think, I mean, Hamilton is a given, <laughs> but yeah. uh, I think those are my top three for now. They change. Yeah, my top uh, is definitely Pippin. We, funny enough, Victoria and I have played the exact same role, the leading player in Pippin. Um, and it's both, I think it's both of our favorite musical ever. I also really love Godspell, which is by the same composer as uh, Pippin and Wicked, um, Stephen Schwartz. And then- I was, I was in Godspell this year, actually. Right before really? COVID. We were a week before and we got in. I was Anna Maria. Okay, which one is that? Which song does she sing? Uh, day by Day. Ooh. The music in that show is so yeah. great. It's, it's really good, great. yeah. Sorry, I just got really excited. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, I, I can't help but tear up whenever I hear uh, most of that music, especially the new version that they just came out with um, several years ago. And then my third, I think, would probably have to be Passing Strange. Um, and it's a, it's a story that I can relate to. It's about a, a guy coming of age and, and leaving home and going on this journey to sort of find his artistic um, fulfillment. Now, in the, the musical, he goes to Germany. I don't go that far. <laughs> I think the, far, the farthest I've gotten is um, 
New York and Los Angeles from Indiana. But, um, but yeah, I just really connected with that one. So those are my three. That's great. Thank you both for sharing. And so Jacob and Julie, if you wanted to unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, guys. I, I just was thinking about this based on your answers to the um, what is your favorite song question. Do you like relate to your characters like you feel all their emotions when you're doing the play? Oh, I think it's my turn, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, quite a bit. And it's funny. It's a funny question because my first contract in the show, I was the standby for Alexander Hamilton, the standby for Aaron Burr, and the standby for King George. So I performed all of those roles on any given night. And what was supposed to happen was that I was going to spend nine months being those three parts as the, basically like the standby understudy. And then I was going to go over to a different company, the Angelica Company, and play Burr for a year. But halfway through my contract, they came back to me and they said, hey, Julius, we really love your Hamilton. Would you be interested instead in going off to play Hamilton in San Francisco? And I said, absolutely, I can't wait. That would be amazing. But in my heart of hearts, I was like, but I'm a burr. I'm such a burr. I'm burr, burr, burr all day long. But I, I connect so much more to Hamilton than I ever did with Bird. There's just something about it that... Um, that speaks to me and maybe it's because he's so different from me. Burr is so much of who I am, very like reserved, very calm, very like willing to wait for whatever is coming his way without pushing too hard. And Hamilton is like, go, 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 which is something that I have to work at a little bit more. So I don't know, maybe that's something about the difference between me and Hamilton is why it's a little easier for me to play than it is for me to play Burr. But I, I definitely, definitely relate to Hamilton a lot. Yeah, I, I'm in this, a similar boat. When I was first called in for Hamilton, first of all, I didn't think I was going to do Hamilton for another 10 years or until I was old enough to play Angelica. Because personality-wise, Angelica and I are like, you know, two peas in a pod. Um, and I thought it was so bizarre that they called me in for Eliza because I was like, I don't, I just like, I'm, I'm not at that point um, before I, you know, had done the work that you have to do to actually play the part. Um, at face value, she seemed a lot more like an ingenue than she really is. And now, you know, like you realize that she's so far from being like a typical ingenue. And I think, you know, she, she could easily fall into that category because of the situation she's put in, but it's the way that she chooses to deal with those situations. It, that, that's what makes her not an ingenue. And so I was very confused. I was like, I have, I have a really strong personality. I'm like, you know, I, I can be very reactive. And in terms of things that I have um, in common with Eliza, those, those are not, two things that apply to her. <laughs> um, but in doing the work and, you know, after I got the job, um, reading about her or more so like reading historical fiction about her because there isn't very much, um, there isn't as much about her as there is on like Hamilton or Burr or, you know, Lafayette and Jefferson. Um, so the fun thing is that you get to I read this book called um, My Dear Hamilton, and it's, just, it's historical fiction, and they looked at all the letters and sort of put like a fictional narrative um, to make a story. And it's cool because she, there are some things that are implied that maybe she advised Hamilton um, and, you know, had a lot to do and, and more say than a woman would um, in terms of what her husband, how her husband conducted himself at work. And it com things like that just completely changed my relationship to the character, the way I was looking at her, the way I looked at myself. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute, like her and I have way more in common than I thought we did. Um, and I think I've learned more 
about myself by having to make it work and relate to her. Um, I've learned to be way more patient, way more actively compassionate, way more empathetic. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think after the fact, I, I do, her and I are not so different, <laughs> if that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, that's really great. It sounds so interesting and neat that both of you sounds like you grew, you grew with your character almost, right? Um, so yeah, great question, campers. And I'm seeing a lot more. I hope I'm calling it in the right order. But Ryan, if you wanted to unmute yourself and ask your question, go right ahead, okay? Let's see. Um, hi, have you ever seen Hamilton on Broadway before you got the role? Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Ryan. Huh? Do you want to go or should I? It's your turn. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, yes, I did actually. I saw it right a year ago tomorrow. Um, I saw it right before my final callback. Um, I think I saw Mark De La Cruz as Hamilton and I saw Danae Benton as Eliza, who was just like, astonishing um yeah and yes i did um i went several years ago with the original broadway cast the only person i did not get to see was philippa stew i think she might have been out um sick or you know personal day or something like that um but i saw it right as they were getting ready to replace David Diggs, who is the original Lafayette Jefferson, because that is the first role that they called me in to um, audition for. So yes. That's great. That's really cool. Okay, so the next question from Devin. Devin, if you wanted to unmute yourself, let's see if I can do that too, um, and ask your question. <laughs> Hi, I was um, wondering some ways that you remember your lines. Good question. Um, for me, remembering lines starts way before we actually get into the rehearsal room and start working on the process. I listen to the cast album quite a bit. I used the sheet music to this, this, this show is completely sung all the way through. There's barely any spoken lines. So there's a bit of a different technique with those two things. But um, yeah, I listened to it a lot. I read my music, my sheet music a lot. And then once we got into rehearsal, hearing other people say their lines made remembering what I was supposed to say next a lot easier. So there was a lot of work long before we got into the rehearsal room. And that's sort of how I approach um, learning any lines. Um, yeah, I think I, I do this, I do sort of the same thing. Um, I also, I have to write everything down. So the entire four weeks rehearsal that I had, I was just rewriting everything over and over and over again. And I think I have, I have a notebook, I think it's still in my dressing room in San Francisco, where I basically just hand wrote all the lyrics in the show because it does help to know what everybody else is saying so that you know where to where you fit in um and so yeah i just wrote everything down um i also have to um i mean having the cast album makes made our job a lot easier um i listened to that since like the day it came out so that helped a lot. Um, the most difficult part for me was marrying the words that I'd known for years and then all the blocking um, and the movement we have to do. Um, and that was just me in the resident's office talking to Ryan or Sherry, our resident director, or Ashley um, and you know, drilling it over and over and over again as much as I could before I had to like go and do it in front of 2,500 people. <laughs> yeah, those are two great methods. That's really helpful um, for 
everyone I'm sure, and that's really neat to hear about. Okay, the next question, and I'm so sorry, campers, if I say your name wrong, please correct me, okay? <laughs> but I think it's Layla and Adeline, if you two wanted to mute yourself and ask your question. Um, my question is, if you have you ever done another musical, and if you did, um, and if you have, uh, how many? Um, so I've done musicals at other shows at school and um, in community theater. This I did. Oh my goodness, I did Evita. I don't know if you guys know that show. Um, yeah. Um, I did uh, with a Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival. I did Evita. I did Three Musketeers. I did a children's show called The Ice Princess. Um, I did As You Like It and Hamlet. Um, I was a cover for Ophelia and I played Ronaldo. Um, and then, ooh. I've done shows like Charlie Brown. I did Seussical and community theater. I was the Sour Kangaroo. Um, and then in school, I did a show called Nonsense, which was an interesting time. It was an interesting choice in musical. Um, there's not a cast album, so you can spare yourself <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> hopefully there are no videos of me doing it. Um, but we, ha we all had to wear habits for three hours um, and dance around on stage. Um, I've done Dames at Sea. I played Mona Kent in Dames at Sea. Um, and I did Pippin. And Hamilton is my first, um, like, job job, like, out of school. Cool. Um, I love Dames at Sea. It's such a great show. Uh, let's see, on Broadway, I have been in The Scottsboro Boys, uh, The Gershwin's Porgy and Bess, and Motown the Musical, both the first time and the revival, the really weird revival that happened like two years later. Um, and then on Broadway national tours, which basically means that the show is still running on Broadway, but then they send a company out into the country so that everyone can see it and it moves around the country to different, um, to different cities. As far as Broadway national tours are concerned, I've done the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, the Radio City Christmas Spectacular, Shrek the Musical, Xanadu, uh, Hamilton, both the Philip and the Ann Peggy Company. I, there's there's a few more that I can't remember right now. I've done like seven of them. And it's, it's after a while, it becomes hard to like sort of keep where you were in each year straight. Um, but I've been working really hard and been really fortunate for the past like 15 years. And so I'm really excited about that. Lots and lots of musicals. That's great. And I'm so sorry, um, Brolin, is that how you say your name? Yeah, okay. Do you wanna ask your question? And I'm actually thinking maybe Victoria can answer this one. Because Victoria, I think you mentioned Pippin earlier. And that's what the question's about. Um, so what is Pippin? And is it anything um, that's like related to the Lord of the Rings? No. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be cool if it was. Um, so Pippin is, it's, um, it's a coming of age story. Um, and it's about a boy who leaves school. Um, and his name is Pippin. And he leaves school and he doesn't really know what to do next. He doesn't have the structure that he had. And now he's like free and he can do whatever he wants. Um, and it's a pretty overwhelming idea that you know, I'm sure you guys being in quarantine, even like, you know, you left school and you're like, well, now what do I do? Um, and so um, Pippin, he goes through, you know, all of these, it's there, all the things he, the, the stages he goes through are shown more symbolically than literally, because it's Bob Bossy, so it's pretty dark. Um, 
but he experiments with a lot of things that you do or might not do or like and you know people who <laughs> Julius you might you could help me out if you want to <laughs> so, so um he gets out of school and he just he goes what do I want to do with my life do I want to get married and settle down and have a child do I want to go off and you know learn more do I want to go to a war as a soldier do I want to be like a ruler and a king because his dad is a is a king of a uh, of a nation, and so he's just he's trying all these things and trying to figure out where it is he fits in the world. You know his his uh, famous song is "I've got to find my corner of the sky," um, which basically means where do I fit in in the world, and it just it follows him on his misadventures. And then he finally lands on something towards the end. And it may not necessarily be the thing that you thought he was going to land on because it's not necessarily the most glamorous, you know, being a prince himself, Prince Pippin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, um, that's basically. That's a much better way of explaining it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you both. That was really helpful and really cool. And now we learn about multiple musicals during this, which is awesome. Um, so thank you for that question and thanks for the wonderful answers. The next question we have, and this is from Miss Maya, if you wanted to unmute yourself. Let's see if I can find you. Hmm. Looks like Maya might have actually had to leave the chat um, or leave the call, I think. So I'll just ask it then. <laughs> What are some suggestions for young actors that want to start a career in musical theater on Broadway? Um, I, my first thing would be to learn just about everything you can. Um, go out and experience lots of fun things. If you want to roller skate, learn how to roller skate. If you want to learn how to baton twirl, do that. If you, you want to learn how to swim, all of these things that you would never think would be useful as an actor are actually very useful because you're often called on to play like you know what those things are or to show that you know how to do those things. I booked, let's just, um, for example, a show that I did called Xanadu on the tour is, takes place in the 1980s. And so it's lots of neon colors and roller skating and 80s style dancing. And I walked into the audition for that show and I was already miles ahead of everybody else because I learned how to roller skate and went quite often as a kid with my family. That was one of the things that we did as a family was go to the roller skating rink. So I was good. <laughs> and I walked into the audition and they had a row of skates and I was confident. I was like, great, when it's time to put those on, I'll be great. And most other people in the room had never even put on a pair of skates before because it's just not that common of a thing. Rollerblades, a little bit more common in, you know, the 2000s. So people could rollerblade, but this show was about roller skating. And it just put me ahead. This one thing that I never knew would be something that I would use um, in a show put me ahead of other people. Likewise, baton twirling. I've done that in the show. I've twirled white rifles and canes and, you know, anything that you are interested in learning, it's useful because somewhere along the way, there's a movie about it or a movie that includes it or a musical that includes it. So learn, learn, learn and experience, experience, experience. Yeah, uh, pretty much what he said. <laughs> um, I think too, there's this idea that, and I, I mean, like, I think social media has played a lot into it because you see all these, like, all these kids who have been training for Broadway or for theater since before they could walk, and you don't have to do that to be able to do theater or get to Broadway or national tours, whatever. Um, I didn't start until, I didn't take it seriously until my senior year of high school when I like really had to just like buckle down and make a choice. Um, and even then I was waffling until I, I went to one school for a year and a half and was a 
dance major with um, a musical theater minor. And then I switched to, uh, I transferred to just sales and I switched to just musical theater. So it took me a while to, to figure it out and decide if it was something that I really wanted to just like commit to, but you do not need to be able to uh, split, maybe you do for some shows, but like you don't need to be able to put your foot behind your head um, at any hour of the day. You don't need to be able to sing the highest. Um, you just need to educate yourself, learn everything you can, um, take lessons in any way you can. I didn't grow up really being able to afford um, dance classes and or acting classes or voice lessons. So, you know, I watched YouTube videos or I listened to, um, I learned how to riff listening to I grew up listening to um, like Destiny's Child, Christina Aguilera, when Jessie J released an album, um, I just copied them. And then when I got to school, I was able to figure out how to like copy them, but like do it healthily. Um, I also interned with um, a company that did Broadway workshops. Um, and I didn't get to take the classes, but he was just looking for somebody to show up for the week of workshop classes, take attendance, um, let the guest artists know when it was time to move on to the next person in like, you know, little mini sessions. Um, and I got to sit there and watch for eight hours a day, seven days a week, for seven days. Um, I got to watch other people work one-on-one -on -one with people like Max von Essen and Gregory Trico and Natalie Weiss. And I learned so much more from watching and taking mental notes and seeing the interaction than I would have actually having the one-on-one -on -one time. And the good thing is that now, you know, you have websites like Broadway Plus, and I think there's another one, Actors and Beyond and YouTube. <laughs> you know, YouTube that people, record master classes and just throw them up on YouTube for people to watch. So, you know, you, there are tons of resources and had I known about those resources and I had someone to tell me, um, it, it would have helped a lot, but yeah, just, ex just expose yourself to, to everything about it. And, you know, maybe you won't like acting. Maybe you'll want to do sound design or lighting or costume design. Um, or yeah. company man or yeah. management or, yeah, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 you're fine, yeah, yeah, you know, so learn everything you can. That's great advice from you both. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so we have about 15 minutes left. So campers, I'm going to jump to the questions from campers who haven't asked any questions yet. And then if we still have time, we can ask um, some of the other questions too, if that sounds good. So Nicholas, if you wanted to unmute yourself, and this is a great transition, this is actually um, about running tech and soundboard. So I run the soundboard at my high school and I was wondering how you guys do tech rehearsals and like get ready before the show with like mics and stuff. Um. So I haven't been through a tech with Hamilton yet. Um, Julius, you probably have the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so first of all, my favorite people in the theater are the sound people. <laughs> I just want to mm -hmm. tell you that, that like um, sound makes or breaks a show. It makes or breaks an actor's voice. Um, you are so important. You are so integral to what it is that we do. And I always like to be very kind to anyone that I work with, but also, but, but especially the people who control how I sound um, because they can support and or um, make me feel like I'm singing into a giant cavernous building because our theaters are huge. So there are 2000 people to 2,500 people, giant spaces, and you can't actually fill that up with your voice. So at least not healthily seven to eight times a week. So we really rely on tech folks and sound guys in order to make it happen. The tech process is a lengthy and tough 
um, uh, but fun process where we sort of figure out where the show is going to live over a long period of time, especially vocally. So we come in, we at least a half an hour early put on our microphones and normally my, my microphone just sits right there. It makes it look like a little bit of a widow's peak. I know for Victoria, you normally put on a wig prep, which means um, maybe you can explain that really quickly. So a wig prep, it's different for everybody's hair, but for my hair, I just did two French braids and pinned them up. And then I have a headband and a wig cap um, and it holds everything in place. And then you put the mic on. So my mic is, it changed places for the first couple weeks just to see like what sounded better, but it like ended up right here in the center. Um, and, and is that under your wig or on top of your wig? Under. The, under your uh, wig. It's on top of the wig cap and then like the wig goes on top. So, yeah. Yeah. So we find the good placement during tech of where it's going to be. For some characters, they, they have their mics here. Um, for some, it's here. For some, they have on wigs, so it goes under their wigs. For me, all I do is part my hair and then pull the wig, uh, the uh, cord through, and then pick my hair out so you can't see it. So it just sort of looks like I'm, I don't have on a microphone at all. Um, and then we play with the levels and we find out over the next few days, it's sort of a collaboration going, I can't hear, I can't hear myself, I can't hear the music, I'm too loud, I feel myself reverberating in the house. Um, but it's all sort of a, a give and take and uh, a process of elimination over the course of like two weeks. And it continues to change over the, the, um, the run of the show because voices aren't, we're not robots, we're not instruments, we can't sound the same every night. So every night we're being mixed live. Some days I have a little more voice than I do on other days, or I have a little less, or Victoria's feeling sick. So we go to the sound guy and we say, hey, can you bump me up today? I'm not feeling well. And if you're nice to them, they say yes. And if you aren't so nice of a person, they might say yes and then not bump you up. So, <laughs> so it's always great to be kind to everyone that you work with. That's awesome. And thank you so much for sharing. It sounds like it's a very ever changing process and something to learn from. So that's really neat. And sounds like every part of the theater is important, which is great. Um, so Isabella, it looks like your question was answered previously, but thank you for asking it. Isabella was wondering if you were in any shows other than Hamilton, which you guys talked about a little earlier. And I think next up then, uh, Rose, if you wanted to ask your question. Um, hi, so I wanted to know what your career aspirations and like dreams like theater like moving forward, like roles you really want or like things you really want to be a part of. Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know, I would love to do Alphaba and Wicked. Um, I would love to do Eurydice in Hades Town in terms of things that are um, open right now. Um, I also really want to do Squeak in the color purple. That would be really cool. Um, I'd also really like to do TV film. Um, I love American Horror Story. So if I were ever lucky enough to have even just like a passing like a role that passes through <laughs> on American Horror Story that would be really cool um and I also want to do uh like action movies like Tomb Raider that would be really cool wow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and as for me um you know I'm I'm I think that it doesn't get better than Hamilton I am finally, I finally worked my way to a place in my career where I am the title character of a show. I get to carry a show on my shoulders with support from amazing people like Victoria. And I, I'm really happy doing that. I think the next thing that I would love to figure out is the television and film world. I've got to be on a couple of little TV shows here and there. I was on Modern Family for like two lines and then I did a show on Bravo that nobody saw called Odd Mom Out. Um, and I think that that's the, 
that's the world that I would really love to give more of my time and commitment to after Hamilton is done. But I want to finish what I've started with Hamilton and just um, really, really get to a point where I feel like I've done this thing and I feel very confident. Maybe even play it on Broadway for a little while if they have a little opening on Broadway so I can just say that I led Hamilton on Broadway. Um, but beyond that, television, film, and I would love to go to space. Like any television show where they go to space, Star Trek, um, what else, Star Wars, any sort of sci-fi. If you want to make me look like a crazy alien, great. I'm done. I'm down. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. And I can't wait to watch you two in those future roles. <laughs> um, that's really exciting. And so it looks like, Isabella, you have another question for us. Let's hear it. What part in Hamilton did you originally want? Is it me? I think it's my turn. Yeah. Um, so that, I, I said this earlier, Burr, but I will also say that playing King George III is awesome. And if they were to offer me a King George the Third somewhere in some company, maybe in Africa or you know Australia or wherever they open the show, I would do it in a heartbeat. It's a cake track. <laughs> um, I think it'd be kind of cool to play Angelica at some point. Um, I think it's really cool, and I don't know if it's the same, if it's very similar in other shows, but I think it's cool that you talk to people who have been doing Hamilton for a while and most of the women have cycled through all the sisters, especially the covers. And so I think it, it could be really cool and really interesting to like have played one role and then play the role opposite that role and see, you know, like what it does to you or, you know, how it, how it's, how it changes, I guess. Um, I think I would also want to play Burr if I could gender bend. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. Thank you both for sharing. And if you two are okay, we'll ask one, maybe two more questions. Are you guys still good with that? Yeah. Cool. So Torben and Evie, why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Wait, uh, have you ever made a mistake during a performance? And also, I did just want to call out, this is pretty similar to Jacob and Julie's question. Um, earlier, that was around, can you tell a time when anything went wrong on stage? So any mistakes or any time something went wrong? Oh, yeah. Um, my first week for the surround choreography, my arms were all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think my arms for like 70% of the surround choreography were right. Um, oh, tell, tell them what the surround is. Oh, yeah. So the surround is the second level. So like you see people on the deck, which is where the turntable is, and it's like the actual stage. And then the surround is where the stairs go up to. It's like the balcony. Um, that's the surround. So a lot of the time, for most of the show, when the sisters aren't on stage they're on the surround um doing like very light airy arm choreography and um and the first time the first couple times i saw the show i completely missed it and i was like where is everybody um so unless you're paying attention <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you're really paying attention you would have seen me mess it all up but um yeah that was really tricky um what else? There was one show, um, like about a month or two in when I started to get like, you start to feel comfortable doing everything and you get into a rhythm and you're, you go on autopilot sort of, and you don't realize it. And so there was one show, um, I think Dre was on as Hamilton and during that would be enough. My mind just went blank and I, I don't know, I'm not good at thinking on my feet, but somehow I just like came up with a word to say in place of whatever I forgot. And then the lights went out and we turned around to walk off stage and I was like, what the heck did I just say? <laughs> um, and the same show during Burn, the same thing happened. Um, and I think I said, oh my gosh, I, I think I said like, I'm searching and scanning for answers in every sign for some kind of sign. And when you were mine, and I sort of like saw the first like couple rows look at me like, because hmm? everybody knows the words. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's probably what I, that's at least that's what I remember messing up. I probably there's more somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have plenty of mess up stories. I will tell you that the first time that I ever went on for Hamilton, the very first time that I went on for Hamilton, the turntable, which is the, there's sort of like many parts of the, 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 the deck, the stage that move in opposition and turn in circles and things of that nature. So people can stand on them and they will move sort of like a conveyor belt. Um, it didn't work. And so there's parts in the show that are very specific to those things sort of moving you around without you moving. And everyone else had been doing the show for a while. And my first time, the turntable just decided not to work. So I'm standing on stage and I'm like, what do we do? And fortunately, everybody around me just sort of like smiled and picked up chairs that were supposed to move on their own and move them where they were supposed to go. And we moved tables where they were supposed to go, even though the, the stage was supposed to do it automatically. And it just gave me the confidence to keep going. But I was so nervous. I was like, it's my first time and y'all are gonna throw a non-moving stage at me. It's already crazy that the stage is supposed to move anyway, but then you don't move the stage. Like, come on guys, like my first time. <laughs> So uh, that's just, that's one time where um, something went wrong and we had to just sort of like think on our feet. That's pretty funny, <laughs> I have to say, but um, it's really great to hear too. I think I heard from both of your stories that you had to pick it up and just act on your feet and go with it, which is really neat and pretty powerful. Um, so I know we just have a few more minutes. So I just wanted to say thank you again um, for joining these wonderful campers who are with us right now. Um, and yeah, Cindy, do you want to say anything before the end of the call? Well, I would love to say thank you first. Um, at Julius and Victoria, it has just been such a pleasure to have you with us. And um, I, it, it's just so exciting to hear about your careers. And I think we'll be watching you, won't we, campers? Why don't we all give them a big hand in the reaction? Can, does everyone know where the, the clappers are, the clapping hands? <laughs> and you, yeah, can, you, you can unmute yourself too and give them a real round of applause. <laughs> At campers, say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Such great questions. Thank you. They were wonderful questions. Our campers are incredible as an audience, as well as um, on stage. And um, we just want to thank you so much. Hi guys, I'm Thane Jasperson. I'm from the original cast of Hamilton. I play Samuel Seabury. I sing a little Farmer Refuted for you. And sometimes I play the king, but I just wanted to say hello. I think you all are the most incredible human beings. And if I could aspire to be only just like you in this lifetime, I think I would achieve amazing things. So I just wanted to send love and say hello, and I hope to see you soon. Uh, take care. <laughs>